it's uh, feasible that a Terminator-like scenario could erupt out of artificial intelligence. And this was an interview that ended up, it was from CNBC, but uh, Business Insider published the article. He says, he, he didn't invest in this for any uh, monetary reasons, but he says, I just like to keep an eye with what's going on with artificial intelligence. I think there's a potentially dangerous outcome. And there's something we need to, you know, something like the Terminator he's worried about. So even the head of the Tesla Corporation is worried about these types of scenarios erupting. And rightly so. I would be worried about this too, especially in this day and age where you have politicians who lie to you continuously. They're building massive amounts of drone armies. It's not for your safety. It's not for your protection. It's to keep you under control. Just remember that when they come down your street or come into your city. We're going to be right back after this break. We got a whole lot more. We got Super Bananas, Dick Cheney, and a whole lot more coming up, including some Alex Jones predictions. Stay tuned after this short break. Alex Jones here to break down some exciting developments in the area of research concerning supplemental iodine. It's nothing less than phenomenal. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. And I used some of the mainline iodine supplements and they upset my stomach and I had some issues with it. Until I discovered a product being developed by Dr. Group, who I was already interviewing as an expert on my radio show, and I began taking the product before he actually rolled it out. You now know it as Survival Shield True Nascent Iodine that your body can really absorb. Then. About a year ago, he said, listen, if you think this is powerful, I'm going to come out with rare earth, deep earth crystals that are incredibly powerful that no one else has as a source for their iodine from between seven and 12,000 feet, literally drilled out of the ground. You put it on a hot plate and it turns into the pure gas. No one else has 99.99% pure iodine. And the results that I personally have had have been life-changing. I was over 270 pounds. And with the iodine exercise and better diet, I have lost now more than 50 pounds total and I'm continuing to lose the weight. I have more energy, my libido, all this crap came out of my skin. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact, nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. This is innovating, this is trailblazing, and the best part is it helps fund Infowars.com, the radio show, the TV show, the whole media operation promoting true libertarian ideas. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. Take advantage of this unprecedented 30% off super detox special at Infowarslife.com. Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew. Bill Gates is back in the news again. And no, he's not creating another operating system that's worse than the operating system before. Or he's not taking over another small company to steal their technology. No, he's creating super bananas. That's right. This is from the Mail Online. Super bananas could be on sale by 2020. Fruit laced with vitamin A begins human trials to tackle deficiency in Africa. And it goes on to talk about all the various benefits of having uh, vitamin A inside the bananas, especially for people who live in Africa, including while the outside of the super bananas will look just like any other banana, the inside will be different. The banana flesh of a pro-vitamin A enriched banana is orange rather than the cream color that we are used to. And in fact, the greater the pro-vitamin A content, the more orange the banana flesh becomes, lead researcher Professor Dale said. Foods high in vitamin A typically are eggs, cheese, and yogurt, stuff that you really don't find in poorer developing countries. But let's take a look at old Professor Dale. He looks like a nice guy. He looks like he wants to help the, feed the world and be a good Samaritan. But who is funding Professor Dale? That is the $10 million question. And if you get to the bottom of the article, it talks about Bill Gates and the Gates Foundation funding this project. And we have Leanne McAdoo with a very eye-opening look at what Bill Gates is really doing with his funding. So-called super bananas are soon to hit store shelves and media outlets can't help but go, well, bananas over this Bill Gates backed fruit. 
Researchers say the pro-vitamin A enriched bananas could help improve the health of millions of Africans by seeking to improve vitamin deficiencies that are rampant in East African countries. But first, the bananas will be tested right here in the USA. Our lax labeling rules for GMO foods make us the perfect lab rats. Meanwhile, most African countries have banned GM crops. So focusing a crop tailored to local markets and conditions is the perfect way to ease GM crops into Africa. The Banana Project is backed by close to $10 million from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And considering Gates holds hundreds of thousands of shares in biotech giants Monsanto and Cargill, it seems likely that the prospect of getting patented bananas to one of the world's largest banana-consuming societies is quite attractive. But that's not it. The world's richest man isn't worried just about more money, but control, population control. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has dedicated millions of dollars in research for artificial contraception, sterilization, and abortion initiatives for the world's poorest countries. Gates admitted during a 2003 interview with PBS that his family's involvement in reproductive issues has been extensive. He referenced his own prior adherence to the beliefs of eugenicist Thomas Robert Malthus, who believed that populations of the world need to be controlled through reproductive restrictions. Bill Gates' father, William H. Gates Sr., has long been involved with the eugenics group Planned Parenthood, which was of course founded on the concept that most human beings are just reckless breeders and human weeds in need of culling. William Gates Sr.'s association with Planned Parenthood and his continued influence in the realm of population and reproductive health is significant because Gates Sr. is co-chair of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. This longtime eugenicist guides the vision and strategic direction of the Gates Foundation, which is currently heavily focused on forcing GMOs on Africa. The Gates Foundation has admittedly given at least $264.5 million in grant commitments to the Alliance for a Green Revolution in Africa, and it also hired Dr. Robert Horsch to head AGRA in 2006. Horsch is a former Monsanto executive who developed Roundup. According to a report published in La Via Campesina back in 2010, 70% of AGRA's grantees in Kenya work directly with Monsanto, and nearly 80% of the Gates Foundation funding is devoted to biotechnology. The Gates Foundation pledged $880 million in April 2010 to create the Global Agriculture and Food Security Program, a heavy promoter of GMOs. GAS provided $35 million in aid to earthquake-shattered Haiti. The money was to be used for implementing GMO agriculture systems and technologies. And this is in addition to the $25 million in GM research to develop vitamin and protein-enriched seeds for the world's poor. Now, the media loves to point out how Bill Gates's philanthropy has cost him the title of world's richest man. But the truth is, instead of paying taxes on all of those billions, he makes charitable donations, donations which end up favoring the commercial investments of the tycoon. He invests his profits where it is favorable to him economically. The Gates Foundation is currently in the process of spending billions of dollars in the name of humanitarianism to establish a global food monopoly dominated by genetically modified crops and seeds. And based on the Gates family history of involvement in world affairs, it appears that one of its main goals, besides simply establishing corporate control of the world's food supply, is to reduce the world's population by a significant amount in the process. So if you're a viewer of mainstream media websites, you probably think super bananas are the best thing since sliced bread. In fact, if you type the word super banana into your search engine and go to news, wow, you got Washington Post, the meet the super banana and vitamin enriched upgrade. Uh, you've got Time Magazine, researchers hope super bananas will combat vitamin A deficiency. Uh, RT, genetically modified super banana to be tested on Americans. Oh, man. And then uh, CNET, Bill Gates funded super banana ready for human testing. All these very positive headlines. Nobody questioning the moral ethics of Bill Gates, except us here, which you just saw. We were questioning his background and why, why he's there. But why does the media give him such a positive spin? You know, well, it could be from, if you go check out an article from 2012 written by Aaron Dykes, Bill Gates pays media to portray him as a saint. Admission hidden in plain view, paid reports. Risk millions of lives pricing dangerously untested vaccine and GMO programs. Oh, 
GMO, like the super banana. It's all right there if you just do the research. Bill Gates is not who he thinks he is. And going into the article, the simple answer is that many media voices are foundation funded with grants and partnerships paid directly from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Oh, that's right. You've heard about the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation giving billions and billions of dollars to different causes across the globe. Well, that's one way they can hide uh, their tax strategy. They can hide money by giving it away tax free and then by reaping the benefits through the investment companies like his investment in Monsanto. The very journalistic outlet, outlets who should be otherwise holding Gates policies accountable with tough questions and volumes of scrutiny are instead financially tied to his work. And the article shows a few headlines. There's, there's a statement that happens. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation supported in part last year's ABC News initiative, Be the Change, Save a Life, which focus on health care in some of the poorest areas of the world. What they don't tell you is that the Bill, the Bill Gates polio vaccine causes polio. Up to 45,000 cases in just one area alone in India. Look that up. You'd be surprised, but you'll never hear about it here in the mainstream media. And then uh, note the difference between ABC's dull headline, Beating of America's Richest About Needed, attendee says, versus the London Times eye-catching headline, Billionaire Club and Bid to Curb Overpopulation. So you get different headlines to people who aren't being paid for by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Uh, moving on further in the article, the Seattle Times disclosed in February 2011 at least 45 media entities receiving money from the Gates Foundation. Some of the money is significant, other grants are paltry, but history shows that financial support tends to sway influence even without buying it. And there's the list of foundations, BBC World Trust Service, Brookings Institute, John Hopkins University, National Public Radio, uh, Public Radio International, Stanford University, World Health Organization. All which will give glowing reviews and glowing testimony to the great powers of the saint. And there he is in the article, the Saint Bill Gates, who's really out to save humanity and curve overpopulation. Yeah, there he is. He's really there to help you, right? And don't say anything bad about Bill Gates or you might be considered a racist or inspiring hate or violence, just like what happened to us just this week. Uh, web filtering company launches purge of libertarian conservative media. And it appears there's a company called Blue Coat Systems, which likes to go around categorizing different types of websites and whether they're good or bad or violent or hate filled or, and just with the stroke of a pen, with a keystroke, they can change your designation and allow millions of other places that have web content. They won't be able to get it because they employ the Blue Coat filter. Upon investigation, it was determined that the company used the internet filtering software Blue Coat, which miscategorized Infowars.com as violence, hate, and racism site, placing it in the same category as the Ku Klux Klan and the Cockfighting League. Blue Note described their violence, hate, racism category as sites depicting extreme physical harm to people, animal, or property, or that advocated provide instructions on how to cause such harm, which is not what we do here at Infowars.com. So we were receiving a lot of blocked uh, site emails from a lot of our listeners. And it happened around 1230 yesterday. I started getting emails saying, hey, you're being blocked. I'm here at Camp Mabry, which is here in Austin, Texas. And I said, well, that's interesting. I printed it off, showed it to Alex. He goes, I bet there's more check the tips uh, email address. So I went there, tons of them from Fort Campbell. Here we got some, a few of them there. There's the Fort Campbell information assurance, access denied, talks about violence, hate, racism. Uh, there's another one here in this article, the canine browser alert blocked by the canine web protection. So all these are in place in different organizations of the government all over the country, all over the world even, to protect you from certain material they don't want you to see. Well, by Blue Coat putting us under that designation, it made us be blocked from these sites, potentially causing us harm in terms of advertising dollars or people coming to the site and getting information and spreading it to their friends, causing you harm out there by blocking your access to information. Well, there was an update. If you go to the top of the article, it appears Blue Coat has backed off and removed Infowars.com from the violence, hate, racism category. If anyone is still encountering issues, please email us at showtips at Infowars.com. But it goes beyond that. Blue Coat was deceptive in how they labeled us. And once we called their attention to it, you know, they backed off. But what if we 
didn't call their attention to it. Well, we'd still be listed like that and people, millions of people across the country would not be able to access the site, Infowars.com.